All right, so we're gonna graph some logarithms very quickly. There's only two examples, uh, and they're with transformations. And the reason why there's only two is because we've done transformations so many times. This is just one more of our basic graph shapes. And having graphed some exponentials, we should have a pretty good idea about what our key points are, but switched, and what our asymptotes are, but switched. And so we're applying that logic to some logarithms and just getting these pictures on some new graphs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refresh remember on what the graph of a logarithm looks like, what the domain, what the ranges, what the key points are, and then apply that to two examples. Um, with logarithms, we do need to absolutely understand that a logarithm is the inverse of some sort of an exponential. So exponentials are always increasing, so are logarithms, or always decreasing, and so are logarithms, just a little bit different. Uh, our logarithms always have a domain, before we shift it, of positive numbers. So our x values all have to be positive in order for us to evaluate inside of our logarithm. We get out all real numbers, sure, but our domain is always positive until we start shifting that. We're going to see that play along here. <clears throat> our key points are always, always 1, 0, and, and a comma 1. That stems from whatever our base is, and that comes from the fact that with exponentials, that's what we got, but we got 0, 1, and 1, a. So reverse that, we have for inverses, 1, 0, and a, 1 for every exponential before we start shifting that. And likewise, we have a horizontal asymptote at 0 for exponentials, and therefore we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 for our logarithms. So our graphs look about like that. Here's our key points, 1, 0, a, 1. Here's our vertical asymptote, key points of 1, 0, a, 1. Depending on whether a is greater than 1 or less than 1, we have this increasing or decreasing graph. We know that because if a is more than 1, then our key point of a comma 1 would be to the right of 1. If a is less than 1, our key point of a comma 1 would be to the left of 1. That would give us an increasing or decreasing graph because the output would be 1 in both those cases. So a more than 1, 1, a less than 1, 1 gives us that look. So let's move on. Let's talk about our logarithms. We'll talk about putting them in the right order. I'm going to use key points in our shifting for our transformations to graph these things pretty quickly. So number one thing, with every function, you really do want it in order so that we can identify some of the transformations. So while we might be able to do it here, it's going to look a bit better if we put our logarithm first. All of our functions that we deal with have the same type of look for transformations. Anything within the function is a horizontal shift. Anything after the function is a vertical shift. Anything in front of the function is a reflection or vertical stretch or compression. So when we take a look at our logarithms, the same things happen. So here's how I want you to think through it. I want you to think, this is a logarithm. Yeah, it is. It has a base of E. You need to know that. If it's a logarithm, I have some key points. Let's write our key points. Our key points are always 1, 0, and the base, comma, 1. Now, that may be a little confusing. If you don't have a base, you need to know that base is E. Our key points are 1, 0, right there, and whatever the base is, comma, 1. Our base is E, comma, 1. In your head, just use 2.7 as a close approximation for E. So when you see E, just think 2.7. That's what I want you to do when you're graphing these things. So we have 1, 0, we have E, comma, 1, and now we start identifying our shift. So we say logarithm, all right. Uh, maybe what you should do also is look at your base. Uh, our base is, is it more than 1 or less than 1? Well, if our base is E, our base is more than one, it should look like this unless you start reflecting it. So that's important. If our base is less than one, so a fraction, we have something like this as our root or basic function. I'm not giving you one of these today. They happen less frequently than our bases that are greater than one, but they do happen. I'm just gonna focus on when your base is more than one. You can certainly apply the same techniques that I'm showing you for this. Not a big deal. I'm just getting you to the root of the situation here. So I've identified logarithm, our base is E. Oh, we should probably have something like that. We've identified our key points, one, zero, and E comma one. No problem, we have key points for logarithms all the time like that. And then we start identifying our vertical shift and then our horizontal shift and then our reflection or stretch of compression. So I'm seeing that we've got a shift up of two units and also right one unit. So that plus two, that's a vertical shift. Show that. 
show that and show the, the right one, that minus one. So vertical shift, horizontal shift of right one. Show that because here's what happens. If every logarithm has a vertical asymptote in its basic graph shape, then when we shift it to the right one, it shifts our asymptote for us. And it also shows us that in relation to where, where we shifted, we treat this like an origin. And if you plot your key points from that spot, you're going to get a good shape for this graph. So we would plot 1, 0, but in relation to this, 1, 0 is right here. Notice this is 1, but 0. You won't move up or down. It's got to be on that horizontal line. That's going to happen every time. Just like this is on your x-axis, and that's on your x-axis, and this is on where you shifted your x-axis. And then e comma 1, remember, e is about 2.7. So from here, 2.7, 1, 2.7, 1. So 1, 0 on the, x, on the shifted version of your x-axis, and 2.7 comma 1. That's like your key point in this situation. We've also shifted our vertical asymptote, so we're going to obey that. And we've got a pretty good sketch of that graph for very, very minimal work. This is the way I want you to go through graphing logarithms. Identify that it is a logarithm. Think about the base. Really have that base in your head and what picture you should obtain. After that, identify your key points using your base. Identify your shifts and any reflections or transformation or a vertical stretch compression. And then we plot it with our key points after shifting. All right, let's try our next one. So this I've tried to throw just about everything I could think of at you. Uh, besides a common log. So a common log has a base of 10, but frankly, 10 is a big number. I don't want to graph it. So we're going to graph something with a base of 3. In order to graph these appropriately, the first thing we want to do is identify what it is and identify if it's in order. So when we look at it, we see a logarithm that says, okay, stop right now and put this in order with your logarithm first. So this and this is a little out of order. It makes it just harder to see what our transformations really are. So we would say this as negative 2 log base 3 of x plus 1 plus 3. So now that we have that in order, we're identifying that it is a logarithm and it has a base of 3. Right now in your head, you should have one of these two pictures. If a is more than 1, which it is, it's 3, we're going to get this look until we reflect it. So it should be based on this look. So let's think through that. That looks like this, and then let's identify what our key points are. Our key points for, for logarithms are always the reverse of exponentials. So in exponentials, we get 0, 1. For logarithms, we get 1, 0. For exponentials, we got 1, comma the base. And so for logarithms, we're going to get the base, comma 1. Our base here is 3. Okay, once we've done that, we start to identify any transformations we have. We start with the vertical shift. Anything after the function, after parentheses, is going to be a vertical shift. So that plus 3 says you're going to shift your graph up 3 units. That plus 1 says that's inside the function. Any, anything inside the function that's affecting your inputs is going to affect a shift on the input axis. So outside outputs inside inputs. This plus one says, I'm next to your x, I'm going to add one to your inputs. That's a shift to the left one. We've identified a vertical shift up three, a horizontal shift left one, remember that's opposite, and now we're going to look out front. What this out front does, that coefficient, does two things. The negative is a reflection across the x-axis, or the shifted version of that. And that 2 is a vertical stretch because an absolute value negative 2 is greater than 2. The A it counts as 2 right here for your, your vertical stretch. So think through what should happen. This graph had a base of 3. It should look like this. We've moved it up 3. Let's see. Uh, left 1. We've reflected it and stretched it. So this graph is up left reflected, it should look like this. Have that picture in your head. It actually should end up looking about like that graph. Now, 
how we do how we deal with that, how we deal with that negative two. Because this negative two happens after we evaluate our inputs and we run through the logarithm, it's going to affect the outputs of our, of our logarithm. And so the outputs of our key point get affected by that negative two. Just like every other time, we're going to multiply our outputs times negative two. Not your inputs. Well, that doesn't do anything for one zero. That stays the same. But it is certainly going to multiply one times negative two. So we get one zero still, and then we get three comma negative two still. Okay, that's fantastic. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to plot this. So from our shifted up and left versions of our axes, from our new vertical asymptote and our new where we, we consider to graph our key points, this acts like the origin, we're going to plot one zero. We're going to plot three comma negative two. So three comma negative two along with the same scale that we have is from this as treated like your origin for your key points. One, two, three, down two. That's three negative two as plotted from your shifted graph. Of course, the point three negative two is not on this logarithm. The actual point is going to be about two comma one, but we're using this technique. Finally, your vertical asymptote plays along whether you reflected the graph or not. If you reflect a vertical asymptote about the x-axis, it's the same exact thing. And so you have to obey that. You also need two points, don't you? Because we don't want to make the mistake of accidentally graphing this logarithm this way. It's not that way. It's been reflected and stretched. It should be this way. That's why those two points show that. Also, this does not have a horizontal asymptote. Logarithms don't have that. Oh, their range is all real numbers. It can't have a horizontal asymptote. Let that sink in. So this is not going to level out. It's going to get to negative infinity slower, but it's still going to get there. And so don't make this, and uh, I see that many times, like students go, oh yeah, horizontal asymptote, because I want to. Um, don't do that. Think back to what your graph does. This doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. This continues to positive infinity, albeit slowly, but it does. It does do that. So we're going to plot this. I don't know exactly where we cross the x-axis. If you want to make this a little bit better than the sketch I've done, start plugging in values that you can evaluate. Now, what do you mean evaluate? We spent a whole long time thinking through logarithms in our head in the last video. Uh, so think about things like this. What would you have to plug in here to simplify that logarithm? Well, you could do something like, um, you could do something like two, I already have that, but you do something like two, think about this. If I plug in two, two plus one is three. The logarithm asks you three to what power gives you three? One. That would give you out one. That's what logarithms ask. Logarithms ask you what powers it take to go from here to the argument. That's what it asks. Logarithms represent an exponent. That's what they do. Well, we already have that point. What would the next value be? You'd have to plug in eight. Plug in eight and you go eight, wow. 8 plus 1 is 9. If I plugged in 8, evaluated 8, I would get 8 plus 1, which is 9. 3 to what power will give you the 9? 2. 3 to the second power will give you 9. So this whole thing would simplify to 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is 1. The next point would be 8 comma 1. That's way over there. It's off the screen. Now we just plugged in 8, but also look at this. What if we plugged in 0? Man, this is important. I want you to really see it. What if you evaluated 0? Should we get the 3? Yes, yes, check it out. If you evaluated this for 0, last little bit, 0 plus 1 is 1. Wait a minute. 3 to what power would give you 1? Do you remember that if I evaluate for 0 and I get 1, Logarithm of I don't care whatever base you have, log base whatever of 1 is always 0 every time. 3 to the 0 power would give you 1. Any base to the 0 power would give you 1. If you ever have an argument of 1, your logarithm is going to simplify to 0. So this whole thing would be 0. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. That actually works. And that might make this graph a little bit better. 
So I hope that that makes sense. I hope that you're seeing the transformations that we know and love and the technique that I've taught you works all the time. It really does. I hate teaching stuff that I have to reteach later. So I gave you that, that technique of transformation so that we use it up to and including this. And this is the last thing that we actually have to graph in, well, the college algebra portion pre-calculus. Trigonometry, we got a lot more graphing. And you know what? The transformation stuff, it still works. Um, so that's going to be very useful for us, and we'll see that when we get there. But for right now, I need you to understand to put things in order, identify the logarithm, the graph that you're going to get, think through your transformations, maybe even label them out. This actually has four transformations, up, left, reflect, and vertical stretch. Uh, you should be thinking through what the graph does. Identify your key points as one, zero, and the base comma one, and then multiply if you if you need to multiply the outputs. Then we do our shifting, we put our key points, and we, we graph it along with our, our vertical asymptote for logarithms or horizontal for exponentials. Hope it makes sense. Get some practice in on that, and I'll see you for another video when we start solving exponentials with logarithms and solving logarithms with exponentials. So see you for that video in a little bit.